Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to calculate cost of goods sold and how it relates to the income statement. My name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where I teach accounting and finance with Excel. So we're working on the financial accounting series right now. So we're in chapter four, accounting for merchandise activities. So in chapter four, we have a different income statement because we now have inventory that we sell. And we have costs of goods sold. Now, if you want to check out our playlist, we've got articles, I've got videos, um, all sorts of things to help you learn financial accounting. All right, so here we are with costs of goods sold and the income statement. So here we're going to work a problem. The alpha company, we have some missing information. We have some given information. And so here's how we want to think about it. Now, in chapter four, the merchandising chapter, we have a different income statement. It's going to be sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit or gross margin. And then we have the operating expenses, and we would call these a couple of different names, SGNA for selling general administrative. Here, just GNA for general administrative expenses. And then we have net income. Now, uh, we're living in a perfect world here. There's no taxes. And so if you had taxes, that would come out right before you did net income. All right, so there's our income statement. But how do you calculate costs of goods sold? In this chapter, here's how you do costs of goods sold. It's brand new in chapter four, the merchandising chapter. So we take beginning inventory plus our purchases of inventory, and that gives us goods available or inventory available for sale. And then we subtract out what we didn't sell, the ending inventory, and then we have what we did sell, the cost of the ones we sold, is cost of goods sold. So to work this problem here, it takes these two formats. You've got to write it out and plug in numbers and solve for what's missing. All right, so let's see what we know. Um, these, I think, are alphabetized, which is a silly way of doing it, but just to show you're just trying to grab information and plug it in where you need it. So beginning inventory is 10,000. Beginning inventory is 10,000. Cost of goods sold here is calculated for us at 35,600. Okay, now it goes in two places, right? It goes here uh, at 35,600. Our G&A expenses are 14,500. Our purchases are 34,000. And our sales are 97,000. So we're missing some information. We're missing ending inventory, we're missing gross profit, and we're missing net income. Well, we can do this. We can take uh, the sales minus the cost of goods sold, 35,000. And so our gross profit looks like it's gonna be 61,400. And what is our net income here in this example? 61,400 minus the 14,500, and we get net income is 49,000. 46,900. All right, so how do we do to get any inventory? We need to add up the available items. So we had beginning inventory plus our purchases. So we had available to sell 44,000. We did sell 35,600. So how much did we not sell? Well, 44 minus the 35,6 gives us 8,400. All right, so our missing information is ending inventory is going to be, I'm just going to highlight these if that's all right. Ending inventory is 8,400. Our G&A expenses are 14,400. And our net income is 46,900. All right, we've got another problem. Let's do a different problem. Same setup here. We have different information uh, that is given to us. All right, what if we have sales are 90,000? Our cost of goods sold is 68,000 and 68,000, two different places. Our beginning inventory is 28,200. Our G&A expenses are 15,500 and our ending inventory is 5,600. All right, so we can do our gross profit. 
Our gross profit is going to be 90 minus 68. That's 22,000. We have net income then of 22 minus the 15.5. So our net income in this case is 6,500. So, so far we've got gross profit is something we needed to know. Uh, net income we didn't know. We saw for that. Now we need to go back and find what our purchases are. So we have beginning inventory plus purchases gives you goods available. And then you subtract out ending inventory to get costs of goods sold. So if we subtract going down, we have to do the opposite and add going back up. So 68 plus 5,600 means our goods available must be 73,600. And we can subtract out 73 minus the 28,200. And that's going to give us our purchases, which we did not know. Okay, here's our third example. We have different information that's given and different information we need to solve for. So here we, we're missing costs of goods sold and we're missing gross profit and net income. All right, so let's calculate what we have. So plug in what you know, solve for what you don't know. So our beginning inventory is 4560 and our G&A expenses are 23,500. Our purchases or net purchases are 6,600. Our sales are 25,600 and our ending inventory is 4160. All right, so we can get started. We have to work on the bottom here. We don't have enough to work on the top. So our goods available would be 4560 plus the 6600. We have 11,160 goods available to sell. Our ending inventory, we did a count and we have 4160 left. So how much is our cost of goods sold? 11 minus the 4160. So our cost of goods sold is 7,000. Now it goes on the income statement. So the 7,000 is sales minus cost of goods sold and we're going to get gross profit. So 25 minus the 7,000. We've got 18,600 as our gross profit and our net income is 18 minus the 23,500 we're going to have not a net income, but a net loss of 4,900. So what did we solve for in this case? We solved for cost of goods sold. Remember it's in two places. It's on the cost of goods sold calculation. It's also on the income statement. And then we had gross profit and then we had net income. All right. So this is how cost of goods sold relates to income statement. Check out our other videos. Please like, please subscribe, and ask questions in the comments below, and I'll try to do my best to answer your questions. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.